make sure that we're all working with the same set of sounds. Find the TSD-100 disk and load it into the drive. Press storage, press disk, select load. Use the data entry controls to set the type equals 120 programs. Set load file equals to user banks. Select yes. In a few seconds, the load operation will be complete. Selecting Programs and Sounds. We'll begin our tutorial by selecting and playing a few of the TS sounds. Press the Sounds button. This puts the TS into Sounds mode. The TS display will be showing you the six sounds available in the bank that's currently selected. More on banks later. Press the button directly above or below the sound you want to select. The bank of sounds you see may differ from the one shown here. The buttons located inside the display are called soft buttons because the functions of these buttons are determined by the software. You can access other banks of programs in the current bank set, more on bank sets later, using the 10 bank buttons located directly under the display. Press one of the 10 bank buttons, 0 through 9, below the display. Its yellow LED will light. Press the soft button directly above or below the name of the sound you wish to play. TS banks are organized into larger groupings called bank sets. Press the bank set button a few times. Each time you press, the TS displays the new bank set and the sounds within it. 
The name of the bank set is located in the upper left corner of the screen. You can select banks and sounds from each bank set using the real-time controllers. Real-time controllers are a type of controller that lets you modify sounds as you play them. The TS includes a number of real-time controllers. The function of each is programmable and can vary from sound to sound. For these next few exercises, move to bank 9 in bank set R4. The display should be showing R4, 9 in the upper left corner. Using the pitch bend wheel, select the sound mist. Move the pitch bend wheel, the wheel farthest left, while playing the keyboard. This will allow you to bend the pitch of the sound. The pitch bend wheel, like the other controllers, can be programmed to do other things too. See your musician's manual for details. Using the mod wheel, select the sound multi bass. While playing a key, move the mod wheel, the wheel farthest right. Pushing the wheel forward will add vibrato to the sound. Select the sound grand piano. Move the mod wheel. Pushing the wheel forward will allow you to control the effects mix for this sound. Please note, the mod wheel, unlike the pitch bend wheel, does not return to its original position once released. It remains wherever you set it. Normally, you'll want it left rolled all of the way toward you when you're not using it. Using the poly key pressure feature. Pressing harder on the key generates poly key information. This controller information can be used in a variety of ways. Press the Bank 1 button and select the sound Sitar Groove. Press the G4 key down, then press more firmly on the key. Notice that the pitch is raised a whole step. Press the E2 key and then press harder. Notice that the pitch is lowered a whole step. This is because poly key pressure, like all modulators, can be assigned to modulate different parameters within the same sound. By the way, the rhythm you're hearing is a good example of one of the many hyperwaves found in the TS series. Another Ensonic exclusive is the patch select buttons. You'll find these located above the pitch bend wheel. Select the sound tutorial from bank 9 in bank set U1. The display should be showing U1 9 in the upper left corner. Play a note or chord. Press and hold the left patch select button and play a note or chord. Press and hold the right patch select button and play a note or chord. Press and hold both patch select buttons and play a note or chord. In this case, the patch select buttons are used to call up completely different sounds. Select the sound ELEC keys from bank zero in bank set zero. The display should be showing U00 in the upper left corner. Try holding first the left, then the right, and then both patch select buttons while playing the sound. In this case, the patch select buttons are used to call up completely different versions of the sound. Stacking sounds on the TS keyboard is simple. Press the Sounds button to enter Sounds mode if you are currently in some other mode, and select Bank 0 in Bank Set U0. Select the Grand Piano sound. This will be the primary sound. Double-click the Soft button directly below the Mist sound. 
this will become one of two possible secondary sounds. If you play the keyboard now, you will hear both sounds. Double-click the soft button directly below the multi-bass sound. This will become the other secondary sound. If you play the keyboard now, you will hear all three sounds. Before you continue, make sure that Grand Piano is selected as the primary sound and that Mist and Multibass are stacked with the Grand Piano. The presets. Sounds that have been stacked together can be saved as presets. Up to three sounds can be combined to form a preset, and these three sounds can be split and or stacked in any way. The TS includes 300 presets when shipped from the factory. Selecting a preset. Press the presets button. Press the soft button nearest the name of the preset you wish to select. Selecting other presets in the current bank. Select the presets in the current bank to get a sense of how this process works. Note that each time you select a new preset, the effect sound changes. This is because each preset can have its own effect setup overriding the effect setups for the individual sounds used in the preset. Selecting presets in other banks within the current bank set. As with sounds, presets are grouped into sets of six, called banks. Press one of the ten bank buttons, zero through nine, below the display. Its yellow LED will light. Press the soft button directly above or below the name of the preset you wish to play. Selecting presets in other bank sets. As with sounds, Banks of presets are organized into larger groupings called bank sets. While holding down the bank set button, press one of the first five bank buttons, zero through four, to select a new bank set. Alternatively, you can press the bank set button repeatedly to scroll through all the bank sets. Select banks and presets from the new bank set as described above. Editing Presets Entering Edit Presets Mode Select a preset by pressing its soft button. Press the preset's soft button once again. The display will replace the preset's name with Edited. Pressing the soft button for a preset once selects the preset. Pressing it again recalls the last edited preset. In this case, the Grand Piano, Multi Bass, Mist stack we were just working with. Note that the last three sounds you selected on the TS become the current edit preset. You can examine the sounds and parameters that make up the current edit preset. Press the presets button. This is showing the three sounds you have stacked. Grand Piano has a solid underline indicating it is the primary sound. Multibase and Mist both have flashing underlines, 
indicating that they are secondary sounds. Editing presets. A number of parameters can be edited so you can tailor presets to your specific needs. For the most part, each of these parameters are edited in the same way. For example, to change the volume of the grand piano sound, press the mix pan button in the track parameters section. Press the soft button underneath grand piano. The number is underlined. Use the data entry slider and or the up down arrow buttons to change the value to 108. You can hear the volume changes as you play the keyboard. Editing the key range of sounds in a preset works a bit differently. Press the key zone velocity button. Press the soft button below the grand piano sound. The low key, A0, for this sound will be selected. Play the note C4, middle C. This will set C4 as the low key for this sound. Be sure not to play the note more than once, or you'll change the setting for the high key as well. If you inadvertently change the high note, which should be set to C8, press the soft button twice to select, underline, the high note parameter and move the data entry slider all the way up to reset the high note to C8. Press the soft button below the missed sound. Set its low key to C4 in the same way. Press the soft button below the multi bass sound twice. The first press selects the low key. The second press selects the high key. Play the note B3 to set the high key for the bass sound to B3. You have just defined key ranges for each sound within the preset. When you play the keyboard, multi bass stops at B3 and grand piano is layered with mist in the upper half of the keyboard. Let's also edit the transposition of the grand piano sound. Press the tuning button. Press the soft button below the grand piano sound. The octave parameter will be selected. Press the up arrow button once to set the octave to plus one. You have just transposed the grand piano track up one octave. At this point, you can play the keyboard and hear the difference. Editing Preset Effects The effect used in a newly created preset is a copy of the effect used in the preset's primary sound. The effect, however, can be freely edited without changing the effect in the original sound. Changing the preset effect algorithm. Press the track effects button three times to move to the effect selector page. Press any of the soft buttons in the upper row to select the effect equals parameter. Use the data entry slider and or the up down arrow buttons to scroll through the list of effect algorithms available. You can listen to the different effects algorithms while in this mode by playing the keyboard. When you finished, select effect number 45, chorus plus reverb 1 before moving on to the next exercises. Changing Effect Bus Routing Most of the TS effect algorithms contain multiple effects. In some cases, you may want to have different sounds processed by different effects. You can determine which of the effects in a multi-effect algorithm will affect a particular sound by editing the sound's effect bus routing. 
press the track effects button seven times to move to the bus page. Press the soft button underneath the multi bass sound. Voice is underlined. Use the data entry slider and or the up down arrow buttons to set the output routing to dry. The bass sound will now be heard without any effect. Press the soft button underneath the grand piano sound. Use the data entry controls to set the output routing to FX2. In the current effect, the FX2 bus is routed to the reverb only, bypassing the chorus. This will allow the piano to be heard without chorusing. Adding dynamic effect modulation. Press the track effects button seven times to access the effects mod one page. Press the soft button above source, SRC equals, to select it. And use the down arrow button or the data entry slider to set it to VELOS. This assigns key velocity as the effect controller this preset will use. Select DEST equals and set it to decay time. This sets the reverb decay time as the effect parameter, the source, that is key velocity, will modulate. Set min to 0.20 and max to 2.00. This sets the minimum and maximum values for the reverb decay time, depending on how hard you play the keyboard. You can now control reverb decay from key velocity. Striking the key faster provides longer reverb times, up to 2.00 seconds. However, you should probably designate which of the three sounds used in this preset has control of the effect so that controller conflicts can be avoided. This becomes more important when using dynamic effects in sequences where you may have a dozen sounds all fighting to control the same effect. Press the track effects button three times to access the mods page. Press the soft button beneath the multi bass sound. Press the down arrow button once to set this to no control. Press the soft button beneath the missed sound and press the down arrow button to set this to no control as well. Now only the grand piano sound has control of the reverb decay in this preset. You can verify this by pressing the soft button above the sounds to unstack them, selecting the mist or multi bass sound, and playing either at a variety of velocities. You'll find that the reverb decay time remains constant. If you select and play the grand piano sound, though, the reverb decay time will change according to how hard you play the keys. Remember to restack the sounds when finished. Writing a preset. Let's save our new preset. Press the preset button twice. Press the lower right soft button beneath the word right. This will take you to the right edit preset page. The upper right corner of the display shows the last selected preset name. Use the soft buttons under the words left and right to move the cursor under the letter of the preset name that you wish to change. 
use the data entry slider or the up-down arrow buttons to select the letter, number, or symbol you want. Press and hold one of the ten bank buttons to select the bank you want to write the sound into. The six presets currently in the bank will be showing in the display. While holding the bank button down, press the soft button nearest the location you want to write the new preset into. Note that the preset occupying the location you select will be replaced by the new preset. All the factory presets are stored on the disk included with your TS and can be easily reloaded if you want to get them back. Editing a program. In this section, we'll be exploring the basic steps involved in editing sounds. TS sounds and voices. For these exercises, we'll be using the sound tutorial, the last sound in bank nine of bank set U1. Select this sound now. A TS program can contain up to six voices in any combination. Editing a TS program then involves editing the individual voices within that sound. Press the Select Voice button. It's located in the lower row of buttons in the Programming section at the right end of the TS front panel. The display is now showing the six voices used in this sound. Selecting, Muting, Unmuting, and Soloing Voices. Voices are selected for editing in the same way that sounds are selected for performing. Press the soft button directly above Grand Piano to select it. Voices can be muted or unmuted easily. Press the soft button directly above Grand Piano a second time. The voice will be muted. Press the soft button again. The voice will be unmuted. You can solo a voice by double-clicking its soft button. Double-click the soft button located directly above Grand Piano. The voice will be soloed and all other voices will be muted. Press the soft button one more time to unsolo the voice. Programming the patch selects. The combination of which voices are muted and which are not can be placed under direct control of the patch select buttons. While watching the display, press the left patch select button, then the right patch select button, then both patch select buttons. You'll see different combinations of voices muted for each patch select combination. Changing the patch select voice assignments with the Select Voice page still showing in the display and neither Patch Select button pressed, mute all but the first voice. Press and hold the left Patch Select button. While continuing to hold the left Patch Select button, mute all but the second and fifth voices. Release the left patch select button while watching the display. All voices but voice one will be muted. Press the left patch select button. All but voices two and five will be muted. Now when you play, with no buttons held down, you hear the rock organ voice. And with the left patch select button down, 
you hear a grand piano in combination with a string section. The TS Waves. The most basic building block of the voice is the wave. A wave is a bit of sound that can be programmed and processed to create a finished voice. The TS contains 254 waves, which are grouped into categories called wave classes. Select and solo voice four in the current program by double clicking its soft button. Press the wave button to move to the wave editing page. Select Grand Piano on the wave page. Fork it. Press the up arrow button to select the next wave in this wave class, Piano Thud. Play a few notes on the keyboard to hear the new wave. Repeat these steps to scroll through the waves in this wave class. Eventually, you'll reach the last wave in this wave class, and continuing to press the up arrow button will select the first wave in the next wave class. The TS display will blink as you switch to the new wave class, the string sound wave class. You can also select and change the wave class you are currently in. Select the second parameter in the wave page. This is the wave class parameter. Use the data entry controls to select a new wave class. When you're done listening to the various waves, select Saw Wave 2 from the Waveform Wave class. We'll be using it in the next example. To do this, take the following steps. Press the upper middle soft button, the wave class parameter and use the data entry controls to locate the waveform wave class. Press the upper left soft button and use the data entry controls to locate the saw wave 2 wave. About modulation. So far we've been listening to the TS waves in a fairly rudimentary context with only the most basic parameter settings. In the next few examples, we'll refine our sound using the advanced modulation capabilities. Using the default envelopes. Each voice has three envelopes, which can be used to control a variety of a voice's characteristics. A number of preset or default envelopes are available, which can be used to automate the process of envelope programming. Press the envelope three button. Press the copy button. It's located to the right of the Select Voice button. Press the Soft button directly below the word Default in the display to call up the default envelope page. Press the Up Arrow button three times to select the Ramp Up default envelope. Press the Soft button above the word Yes to recall the default envelope. The TS will briefly display Copy Completed before returning to the copy page. Play and hold a note or chord on the keyboard to hear the effect of the new envelope. Repeat this procedure if you'd like to recall other default envelopes to hear what they can do. When you're through, recall the slow attack pad default envelope before moving on to the next tutorial example.
Editing Envelope Values. In some cases, you may wish to edit the envelope settings for specific applications. Press the Envelope 3 button once to move to the Envelope 3 times page. Select the Attack parameter and set its value to 50. Play and hold a note or chord to hear the effect. Set attack time to zero. Select the release parameter and set its value to 70. Play and release a note or chord to hear the effect. Set release time to zero. Play and release a note or chord to hear this effect. Before moving on, set attack to 30 and release to 48. Using the asterisks for performance control. A number of voice parameter settings can be adjusted during performance from the track parameters section of the TS. You can determine which parameters in any given voice will respond to these performance adjustments by assigning them in the voice programming section. For example, if you want to be able to adjust envelope attack time for a voice, simply turn on the asterisk following the envelope attack parameter. Press the soft button above attack twice. The cursor will move to the immediate right of the attack parameter under the asterisk. Press the down arrow button to turn the asterisk off. Changing the attack setting in the track parameter section will now have no effect on the attack time of envelope 3 in this voice. Press the up arrow button to turn the asterisk back on. This will allow the attack time for envelope 3 to be controlled in the track parameters section. The compare buffer. You can toggle between the original and edited versions of a sound by using the compare button. Press the compare button. Its LED will extinguish. Play a few notes on the keyboard. The sound you hear will be the original unedited version of the sound you've been working with. Press the Compare button again. Its LED will light. The new, edited version of the sound will be restored. Pitch Bend. Pitch Bend range can be programmed for each individual sound or set globally to use the same Pitch Bend range on all sounds. Editing a sound's Pitch Bend range. Play and hold a note or chord and move the pitch bend wheel all the way forward, then all the way back to verify that pitch bend range is one whole step in either direction. Press the Pitch Mods button located in the programming section. Select the Bend parameter. Use the data entry controls to set bend equals to 3. Play and hold a note and move the pitch bend wheel all the way forward, then all the way back to verify that the pitch bend range is now a minor third in either direction. editing the global pitch bend range. Alternately, you can set the bend parameter to use a global pitch bend setting specified on the system page. With the bend parameter still selected, use the up arrow button or the data entry slider to set the value to system or sys. With the bend parameter set to sys, the amount of pitch bend for this program will be set on the system page. Press the System button. Select the Pitch Bend parameter. Use the data entry controls to set Pitch Bend to the desired value.
play the keyboard and move the pitch bend wheel to verify that the pitch bend range corresponds to the range you've set. Adjusting vibrato, or LFO rate. Vibrato is generally controlled by the LFO, low frequency oscillator. LFO rate can be easily adjusted. Press the LFO button. Select Mod Source and set the value to Wheel. Select Mod Amount and set the amount to plus 99. Do the same thing on the bottom row. Use the soft button to select the rate parameter. Use the data entry slider or the up-down arrow buttons to adjust LFO rate. Press the pitch mod button and set the LFO to plus 99. Editing the filters. A sound's basic tonal character can be shaped using the TS filters. Press the filters button. Select the cutoff parameter. While holding a note or chord, use the data entry slider to vary the cutoff parameter and listen to the effect that the filter has on the sound. using poly key pressure to control the filter. Set the cutoff parameter to a value of 20. Select the mod source parameter and use the data entry slider and or the up down arrow buttons to select press. Select the mod amount parameter and use the data entry slider and or the up down arrow buttons to set this to plus 99. Play a note or chord on the keyboard and while holding it down press more firmly on the keys. The sound will become brighter. Changing the effect algorithm Press the Program Effects button in the Programming section. Press any of the soft buttons in the upper row to select the Effect parameter. Use the Data Entry slider or the up-down arrow buttons to scroll through the list of effect algorithms available. You can listen to the different effects algorithms while in this mode by playing the keyboard. When you finished, select Effect 45, Chorus plus Reverb 1 before moving on to the next exercises. Changing the effect variation. Each effect algorithm has a number of preset variations. Press any of the lower soft buttons to select the variation parameter. Use the data entry controls to scroll through the list of effect variations available. You can listen to the different effects algorithms and variations while in this mode by playing the keyboard. When you've finished, select the third variation, Beautiful Pad, of Effect 45, Chorus plus Reverb 1.
Editing the effects. Once you've selected the effect algorithm and variation you want to work with, you can edit individual effect parameters. Press the Program Effects button repeatedly to scroll through the listing of parameters available for this effect until you reach the Reverb Decay Time parameter. Select the Reverb Decay Time parameter. Use the data entry controls to set the value to 1.30. Saving a sound. We'll need to store our new sound program so that we can use it later in this tutorial. Writing a program. Press the Write Program button. You'll be presented with the Write Edit Program page. Use the soft buttons under the words left and right to move the cursor under the letter that you wish to change. Use the data entry slider or the up-down arrow buttons to select the letter, number, or symbol you want. Moving the data entry slider all the way down selects a space. Name the new sound My-Pad. Press and hold the Bank 9 button. Press the Soft button below the sound Tutorial. The program will be written into memory at this location. Storage. Formatting a floppy disk. Before you can use a floppy disk to save and load data, you must format the disk. Insert a blank 3.5-inch floppy diskette into the disk drive. Press the Storage button. Select Disk from the choices presented. Select Format. Select Format. The TS will ask you to confirm the selection as formatting the disk will erase all files on the disk. Select Yes. In about a minute, formatting will be complete and you can use the disk for data storage. Saving a single program to disk. Select the sound My Pad. Press the Storage button. Select Disk from the choices presented. Select Save. You can select from among several types of files to save. Use the Data Entry slider and or the up-down arrow buttons to set Type equals 1 program. Select Yes. You will be given the opportunity to rename the sound. If you wish, use the soft buttons, the data entry slider, and the up-down arrow buttons to rename the sound. Once you've renamed the sound, select Yes. In a few seconds, the save operation will be complete. Loading a 120 program file. Insert the TS Tutorial floppy diskette into the disk drive. Press the Storage button. Select Disk from the choices presented. Select Load. You can select from among several types of files to load. Use the data entry controls to set the type equals 120 programs. Set load file equals to user banks. Select yes. In a few seconds, 
the load operation will be complete. Loading a single program file. Insert the newly formatted disk into the drive and press the storage button. Select disk from the choices presented. Select load. You can select from among several types of files to load. Use the data entry slider and or the up down arrow buttons to set the type to one program. Underline load file equals and use the up down arrow buttons to locate the sound my pad. Select yes. In a few seconds the load operation will be complete and the TS will display the write edit program page with the sound my pad ready to write. You can rename the sound if you so desire. Using the bank set and bank buttons find a location to write the new program. While holding down the sounds button or one of the bank buttons Press the soft button nearest the location you want to write the program to. The My Pad sound will be written into this location, replacing whatever sound is currently located there. Saving Files to Disk While nothing is accomplished by saving a sound, in this case My Pad, to disk, reloading it, and then writing it back into memory, these steps have been outlined here so that you understand how to move sounds from one bank, bank set, and disk to another. This may come in handy when you want to organize sounds from different locations into new banks to use in performance or sequencing. The steps involved in saving sounds, sequences, presets, and other types of files to disk are all basically the same. Insert a formatted 3.5-inch floppy diskette into the disk drive. Press the storage button. Select disk from the choices presented. Select save. Use the data entry slider and or the up-down arrow buttons to set the type of file you wish to save. Whether it's a sequence file, a bank of sounds, or whatever. Select Yes. You'll be given the opportunity to rename the file you're saving. Use the soft buttons, the data entry slider, and the up-down arrow buttons to rename the file. Once you've renamed the file, or decided to leave the name as it is, select Yes. In a few seconds, the save operation will be complete. Using sampled sounds with the TS. The Insonic TS has the ability to play sounds created for the ASR-10, EPS-16+, Plus, and EPS. These sampled sounds differ from the TS's onboard sounds in several significant ways. Loading a sampled sound from the factory disk. Insert the disk labeled SSD100 sampled sound disk into the TS disk drive. Press the storage button. Press the soft button above the word load in the display. This is a quick way to get to the disk load page. Note that the display looks slightly different when loading sampled sounds. The display shows the name of the sampled sound and the size of the sampled sound in blocks on the top line of the display. The bottom line of the display shows the file type you are loading, in this case a sampled sound, and the directory where the sampled sound is located. Make sure the type parameter is set to sampled sound. Select the load file parameter by pressing its soft button and use the data entry controls to scroll through the listing of sounds available. 
The factory disc that came with the TS offers three sampled sound files, vocal snips, RS perks, and guitar strums. Select vocal snips and press the soft button above the word yes. The bottom left of the display shows the amount of available free blocks within the TS. As shipped from the factory, without any sampled sounds already loaded, the TS has 4,018 blocks of memory available for sampled sounds. Press the Bank Zero button to load the sampled sound into the first bank location. The display momentarily shows loading vocal snips and then returns to the load file display. You have just successfully loaded a sampled sound file. Selecting and playing a sampled sound. Once the sound has finished loading, you'll probably want to select it so you can play it. Press the sounds button and use the bank set and the bank buttons to move to bank zero of bank set S8. You'll find the display looks a bit different when you're selecting sampled sounds. The display shows that bank set location S8 zero contains a sampled sound, that the sampled sound was loaded from disk SSD 100, and that vocal snips contains 420 blocks of sampled sound information. Press the soft button in the center of the lower row. This selects the sampled sound for playing. And that brings us to the conclusion of the instructional portion of this video. Don't forget about the great accessories that are available from Ensonic for your TS product. The TSD-1000, true timbral magic from this collection containing over a hundred new sounds and presets for your TS. Upcoming sound libraries include the TSD-1000 International Collection, TSD-1001 with altered native sounds, TSD-1002, the Rhythm Construction Kit, and many more to follow. Don't forget about the entire EPS, EPS-16+, Plus, and ASR-10 sound library. With over 3,000 sounds, this collection, which was originally designed for our samplers, can now be loaded into your TS. CD-ROMs 1, 2, and 3 are also available and can be connected to your TS using the optional SP4 SCSI interface. If expanding your sequencer memory is in your future, the SQX70 will give you 97,000 notes. Another great accessory for the TS-10 is the ASR-10 Rack Mount Sampler. With total integration of sampling, onboard effects, resampling, and sequencing, the ASR-10 Advanced Sampling Recorder stands apart from all other rack mount samplers. The DP-4 Parallel Effects Processor would be another great add-on. 400 onboard presets, four signal processors, a digital patch bay, and submixing all in one easy-to-use box. The DP4 Parallel Effects Processor, the next generation in affordable effects. Whether you perform on stage or in church, teach, or simply want to have fun at home, the KS32 Weighted Action MIDI Studio gives you the feel of a true piano with the features of a MIDI workstation. A combination that will give you a great feeling.